Hi, I'm Chris Visaya, part of Splunk Education. In this video, I'll give you a basic introduction to the Splunk REST API and show you how we can interact with it. The REST API lets you talk to the backend of Splunk programmatically. Anything you can do in the Splunk Web interface, you can do with the REST API. In fact, Splunk Web is built on top of it. The API is divided into endpoints, or URIs, served by the Splunk server, SplunkD. It uses the SplunkD management port, by default 8089, and the secure HTTPS protocol for communication. The access methods are limited to three options, get, post, and delete. API functions fall into one of two categories, running searches or managing objects and configurations. Let's look at an example of how we can search our index using the REST API. We can use curl with the tag u argument to define our username and password. For this demo, we are using the tag k command to allow unsecure SSL. This, of course, is not a best practice in a production environment. We follow with the address of our endpoint. In this case, search slash jobs. Finally, we use tag d to define the data we will send. Here, we are creating a search variable with a search that finds the top 10 IPs that have tried to SSH into our web servers and failed. The search ID, or SID, is returned, which points to an artifact of the search. An artifact contains information about the search, like arguments passed to the search, events, and search status. This SID will only be valid for the lifetime of the search job. By default, 10 minutes. Before we access events from the search, we will want to make sure it has completed. We do this by authenticating and entering the search ID as the endpoint for the call. In the response, we can see all the details of our search job and see that the job has completed. Now that we know the search is finished, we can request its results. For this call, we authenticate and add the results endpoint after the search ID. And just like that, we have a response of our results showing the top 10 IPs with failed logins. As you may have noticed, the default response for the REST API is in XML. If we need the response to be returned in another format, we can add an output mode variable. Output modes include multiple versions of JSON, CSV, and RAW. Using our prior call, we add a get request with tack tack get followed by a tack d command to define the data we are sending. We then enter the output mode variable. For this example, CSV format. Now we can see the response has been formatted to comma separated values. We have just scratched the surface of what Splunk's REST API can do. There are multiple endpoints that allow you to manage all Splunk objects and configurations. Splunk has also made SDKs available on the development portal that allow you to interact with the API using the language of your choice. To learn more about the Splunk REST API, check out the documentation, Splunk answers, or take a class from Splunk Education. If you have suggestions for other videos you'd like to see, please email us at howtovideos at splunk.com. Thanks for watching.